All right, hey guys. So today, I'm going to show you how I just break down a bead on a car tire. Um, I'm not taking the tire completely off, but I am pulling the top lip up off the wheel and to remove some balancing beads. I've been running these balancing beads for several years in my wife's van. I've run them years be before in older vehicles, and I've had really good luck with them. But recently, I put some new tires on my truck, and I put balancing beads on them. And I just had really, really bad vibrations. I just, they weren't working for the tires. So I ended up paying to have someone pull the tires back off and take the balancing beads out and do a static balance. Well, I guess it's a dynamic balance uh, with a road force tire balancing machine. And my truck has been super smooth since. So I've, I've had a lot of luck with the balancing beads in the past, but on my truck they really didn't work and knowing that that's what was causing it after driving my wife's van a couple times I noticed there's quite a bit of vibration at highway speeds on that too so to avoid the extra cost of having someone remove the balancing beads I'm gonna go ahead and break them down in my garage so I can remove these beads so I'll show you how I do it so I've got this Harbor Freight tire mounting machine um, it's pretty old. I don't know how old it is. A buddy gave it to me a couple years ago and I've got it mounted to my floor uh, with some anchors that have removable bolts. So it's nice because when I'm finished using it I can pull the bolts out. There's a steel sleeve in the concrete and but it's flush so you don't have to worry about tripping on anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and go pull a wheel off the van, roll it up here and get going on this. Uh, so to start out with, you got to pull the valve core out of the valve stem. Uh, for this, they make special tools for it, but I just took a screwdriver and cut a little groove in it. So when you pull that valve core out, you want to make sure to keep a grip on it because you got 30 to 40 PSI in here and pushing out this little tiny valve core, it'll shoot across your garage. If you lose it, you're done. You... And here I've got the dismount bar. Now this thing's pretty worthless as far as pulling the tire off the wheel. Um, it's just kind of a pretty poor design. but. It works for this part really well. So throw this down, put it right on the lip of the wheel, slide the bar in, and then you want to use your foot or something to hold down on this back side of the wheel, otherwise it's just going to try to tip up. But one of the weak spots on this machine is these arms here, just because some of these tires take quite a bit of force to, to break the bead, so these will end up bending, and I see people weld in supports but just slow steady pressure and it'll get to a point that the whole thing will break and you'll see it come off all the way around. There it goes. It has a center cap in it that needs to come out. I found the easiest way on this, just drop it over the center post and it'll knock that right out. So, got the wheel on, got my little post through a lug nut hole, and then I made these little wooden blocks to go on here. And then I can put this on, like so, and then this tube and tighten it down. But I found that. Even with this wood, it'll scuff the wheel a little bit. So I had this old uh, washable diaper. We got a whole stack of these that I use for rags. And I'll put that on just to keep the, the wood from scuffing the wheel. And 
That was like one here. So, like I said, this this dismount bar that comes with the tire changer is absolutely terrible. Years ago, I purchased this. It's a solid, like three quarter inch square bar. It's been machined down here at the end. There's a Delrin end cap that helps dismount. And then on the other side, there's a little piece of angle iron welded on and this plastic insert just to keep from scratching the wheel. This is really the first time I've ever used this bar. I've had it for several years and it works really well. But before I get started, I've just got some furniture polish. I'm just going to lubricate a little bit. Throw that in under the lip of the tire. And you want to make sure that nothing's sticking underneath. And then we're just going to twist. There we go. So. See all the beads down in there? Or the side of the tire that's closest to you, you want down kind of where you can force it underneath the lip of the wheel. The tire is going to go up over the top of your tool and you're just going to spin it around. And you want to keep some downward pressure here close to you. If it starts getting real tight, you need to make sure that the bottom bead is free. Pull that up. There we go. Try not to get in the way of the camera here. We're all there. There it goes. And with that plastic on here, it really keeps things from getting scratched up. I leave the valve core out when I'm seating the bead just because air goes in so much easier if it doesn't have to go around the core. So I'll go ahead and air it up. I'll make sure both beads pop. Cut back in. When you're putting wheels back on, always remember to start every lug nut by hand. Alright, so just got back from a test drive. Uh, no weights in the wheels, no beads in the wheels, 40 PSI in all four tires, and at highway speeds the thing is almost perfectly smooth. I got one tiny, tiny little vibration that I'm hoping getting the wheels balanced will take care of. Um, but there's two vehicles in a row that I've had to remove beads out of the tires just because of the vibration, so I will probably never get beads again. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll throw it maybe up here. And then give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments about what I did or how I did it or why I did it, leave it down below. And we'll catch you next time. Bye.